All right, so welcome back everyone. Hopefully you can hear me right now. I'm testing the stream right now to see whether my voice is coming through. Uh, just FYI, I will be uploading this later on into my YouTube channel. Uh, should be all below right there, piscina underscore streams, and you should be able to find me on YouTube as well as a more helpful part of this video. I'll be adding more to that at that point. But right now, the topic for today is going to be how to get started in photography. Yes, I technically am a professional photographer. I don't really consider myself that, but I mean, I get paid to do it and they say my stuff is good. I don't know if any artist, what point an artist can say that they're proud of their work. I mean, I am, but it's a little bit conceited. I don't, I don't know. Like I'll show you where to get started at least. And I'll tell you some parts of how I got started. So, no, you don't need like a full-fledged camera like this. Like this is my workhorse. This is my Rebel T3i. I've had it for years. It has served me well. And yes, I have upgraded since then. But this is the one that I've used the most throughout my entire career. But no, you don't need one of those. You can even if you want to get started in learning foundations or even if you want to do it as your own career, you can definitely continue with a phone. I mean, I do recommend the newer edge phone, the newer phones because they have the better camera capabilities, but there's, we'll talk about it. Like there's many things you can do with what you have right now. Without further ado, let me get to the meat of today's activity. So. So for today, I will be showing you what it looks like, what goes into photography. So like, what is a photographer thinking about as they're doing something? So to find this website right now, all you got to do is go into, type in a Google camera simulator, and it should be one of the first ones. Like the one that I'm using right now is the Canon outside of auto.ca. Or if you want the top 10, like this right here, that's also where I found it. It's the 10 online camera simulators to improve your photography skills. Like that one has the, the first one on there is exactly the same one, play by Canon. So again, if whichever one works for you, the one that I'll be focusing on right now is this one. And the reason why is that I could tell you about the ISO, I can tell you about the aperture and all the things like the three principles of photography, but it's easier to just show you. So right now, what you see, think of it as you're watching this happen right now. It's like this little plane's inside of you and the motor is running. That's what you see with your naked eye. With the human eye, that's what you see. Now, this play emulator or simulator has you look at what, look, what it looks like through a camera. So right now, it's in shutter priority mode. If you don't know of when you get to these cameras, they all have like these special little modes on top of it, like right here. Uh, there is the shutter priority mode, the aperture priority mode, and then manual mode. We, I will only talk about manual mode because to truly understand photography and truly get used to it, I recommend going full manual. Like if you're at a professional event and you can, and you only need to worry about one thing, we can talk about that later. But right now, stick to manual. Manual is what you need to know to practice. So manual mode means that you decide exactly what everything will be. So let's change that to manual. And now I have control of the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. I'll explain them one at a time. So the aperture going up and down. This one goes from 2.8 to 22. And you notice that there's some things happening over here. Don't worry about that yet. But right now, the aperture is the blur. The aperture is the blur that's happening. Unfortunately, this this simulator doesn't do it in real time. I'll show you that in another one. But the aperture, the higher it is, the higher the f-stop. And that sounds complicated. Again, I don't want to get too into it. But it is the foreground versus the background. The high one, it means you want as many things in sharp, everything to be sharp. Low, that means you want what is close to you or what you desire to be sharp and everything else is has a blur to it this is what makes the bokeh effect i'll talk about the bokeh effect later but basically imagine it like if you have an iphone i'm pretty sure that 
the newer iPhones like have that little bokeh where you're you're sharp and then everything in your background is blurry and people say it looks real nice and a lot of people have started using it. That is the depth of field. That's what that means. That is the aperture. Normally you want something that can go lower than 2.8, but honestly, if you're starting off, that's great to start with. We'll talk about lenses later. Now, shutter speed. Shutter speed is how much light is being exposed into the shutter. The lower it is, well, the higher the number at the end, like right now is at 1 1 180th of a second. That means that things should be moving pretty fast if you're trying to use it right there. The higher you go, let me show you right now. Let me go with a standard 1 over 60 and a low aperture. ISO, I'm going to bump it all the way down to 100. And that's what you see through the camera. That's what you're going to see. Let me show you aperture real high. So notice that that just happened. When you turn up the aperture, the image is going to turn darker. That's why every photographer is always like fiddling with their camera, trying to change things on it. It's because we're always fighting with the sun. The sun is always changing the light, the environment. If we change rooms, we have to change our settings. So that's one of the reasons why we are always changing things and you have to get used to it because photographer's main goal is to capture the moment. And if you're too busy messing with your settings, well, then you just miss the moment. That's so speed is one thing that we have to develop as a photographer, how to move things to exactly what we want to capture the moment that we're trying to capture as quickly as possible. So shutter speed, let me show you what happens. So let's say that I want this propeller right now. I'm, I want it to show it stop. So I'm going to go, I'm going to just go high over here in the shutter speed because the faster it is, the more motion will be like stop. So right now it's showing me right here. The motion should be stopped, but it's going to be very underexposed because my ISO is pretty low right now. See, I'm going to leave the ISO the same, but I'm going to increase the shutter speed and notice what happens to the picture. It gets lighter. So again, turning the shutter speed up into a higher percentage then that makes the image darker putting it higher than this makes it brighter but notice that the what we're trying to get is for this propeller here to stop because it's in high motion so we're going to go up here and i'm going to try to get it so that i can show you a good example of what the picture should look like there it goes and there's a little bit of blur to the propeller so I would be messing around with this a little bit more. There it goes. Like that looks a lot better to me. Like I would be, until I get the photo that I want, I would keep shooting. Or I would keep messing with the settings a little bit at a little bit. Until it looks what I want. Now, finally, the ISO. Good trick to the ISO. All you need to know is that you want it low. The only reason why you would bump it up higher is if you're out of options. It, the ISO is how much light it's, it's taking in. The higher you bump up your ISO, the more grain or digital noise you'll see in your picture. So for example, digital noise, let me show you an example. So that is digital noise. Like you see it like a bunch of things around the side. Like when you zoom into this picture, oops, let me see. We zoom in, you see all this static and stuff right here, that's noise. So the higher you have to bump up your ISO, the more noise you'll get. Let me see if I can show you an example of that. You see that? That's at, the only thing you have to worry about is that I bumped up the ISO to the max one of this. So now you see it with a bunch of little grain and digital noise. Yes, it is possible to edit this out but like you'll lose some resolution in the photo i'll show you in a second what that looks like but yes you can fight the if you absolutely need to you can bump up the iso i recommend keeping it low and yes there are hundreds of like more tutorials in youtube that you can look up just look up the three principles of photography and they'll tell it a lot better than i am right now but this is just to get you started and just so you can see what's happening this entire thing lets you move things as you'd like. Let me see if I can show you this other one that should do it live. Yes. So if you notice, like if you're increasing the shutter speed, it automatic 
automatically it should automatically show you what it looks like so right now if I increase it to 125 you notice that it gets darker if I keep increasing it it's got to get darker but let's say that's what I it's gonna be a fast moving object that's what I want so I have to compensate I have to move the f-stop I have to bump up the ISO to get to the light that I want but notice that the ISO is very sensitive the more I move it the more grain will be introduced to my photo so I gotta keep it low I gotta adjust with the other things to try to make it what I want to look like a little bit lower so to me that looks okay like that looks okay I would press I would take a test shot and if it looks good then I would come at it from different angles to see what it looks like but back to cameras back to cameras so you again I said I would sh tell you guys that how to what gear to get uh, like I said you don't need one of these you don't need honestly you don't even need one of these uh, there's this video that's by uh, potato jet that where he d uses uh, this $94 camera to shoot cinematic video where like I mean yes but he's a professional he's been doing this forever he knows what the tricks to do that he needs to do to get at least good quality video that he can edit later but the things that I want you to know is that a good budget for a camera isn't for a good intro camera is not like 1797 that's what I paid for my new upgrade and that's just for the body out again we'll get to it but there are many places out there where you can find good cameras uh, like offer up uh, Craigslist uh, I recommend buying used for your first camera if you're gonna be going with the option of a, like an actual camera that you can like continue upgrading or just to start off with a professional camera because yes while it might be possible to do it on an iPhone uh, you need special apps and everything to like mess with the ISO to mess with the things that I just showed you and I think Visco yes the Visco girls so uh, it's just but Visco is one of the apps that lets you actually take control of that so if you want to start off on an iPhone and like I don't even have five hundred dollars or something to get started of course get started on an iPhone Android and just download the Visco app it's free it will be like you'll need to look up a lot of tutorials on YouTube for that though because it's not very user friendly like for me I know what I'm doing and it's like kind of annoying to move through there but again I uh, just want to get started I recommend $500 intro budget that will get you a camera body and at least one lens to get started as well as probably one to two batteries and some other accessories that you might like so again five hundred dollars is what i recommend to get started with photography uh for example i spent about 450 total for this uh camera body for this lens that came with it this is my oldest lens that came with this thing uh yeah the t3i is like i want to say 10 years old at this point but and I also got the the bag the camera bag it was about four hundred fifty dollars total and I I added slowly over the years like an extra lens I like an extra longer lens Let's see if I can show you like a telephoto lens and then like a telephoto lens is for like something that's really really far away and then of course the prime lenses which give you this bokeh effect that I told you about it kind of gives you that cinematic look it's for objects that are really close there's no autofocus on this so you gotta like you can't be moving around with it but a lot of these lenses weren't that expensive like one to two hundred dollars each but to get started just get out there get uh, shooting five hundred dollars is what I recommend uh, like I said what you want to buy is up to you it honestly depends on what you're going to be doing with it if you want a camera that just has good quality photos but not video or like don't worry about the video then of course uh go with the canons uh 
you can get started with this one it's a t3i i would go up a little bit more because they don't make these anymore and they're more expensive right now because of that but honestly but if you want something for like i want to shoot something i want a video i want a camera that can also work as my video equipment uh if this was even a few years ago, I would say like that's not possible under five hundred dollars. You're not gonna get anything out of it. But GH4, the GH4s by Panasonic have been like pretty on it. Like that's the ones that I have right now, the GH5S, and it is a pretty good camera and a pretty good. It's pretty good for photo and pretty good for video, so it's like a good compromise between everything. Like I can use it for both of those things. But uh, like right now, I know I found one like. This one is a GH4 by Panasonic. It is for $350. They're including a lens. They're including a battery. And for $350, it's a great deal, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know if I trust this seller, but because honestly, you have to look at the seller. You have to look at their history. You have to make sure that it's a legit deal. Oh, it's saying it also comes with an SD card and a charger. Again, seems like a great deal to me. Seems like a good, better than better camera than I started with and cheaper too but uh again you don't have to like set aside thousands of dollars for this i mean after everything of upgrading i say i spent like 2500 dollars upgrading my camera gear because i like went through so long to get to this one thing to consider though when you're buying your first camera is how much do you want to invest in it because let me show you right now of the lens for this camera body will not fit the lens for that camera body that you see on the screen. The GH4 uses different lenses. So if you're like the most common, the most affordable lenses, go Canon. I'm like, you can't go wrong with that. The EF system is pretty common and standard place anywhere else. Uh, yes, there are tricks and extra things you can buy for this to like make it so that it can get the lenses. But that's extra money you're going to need to put put into the gear and everything. I think the Metabones adapter, which I know it's like a new term for you, but the Metabones adapter right here, like that, is an extra couple hundred dollars for your gear. That's just to get the lens working. So again, I recommend looking into which camera is right for you, for what you want to do. Do you need slow-mo? Do you need 4K? Do you need 6K? Do you need uh, something that can handle low light capacity? Do you need... And yes, the more things you want, the more expensive it's going to get. That's why I'm suggesting the GH4, because it's a great 4K camera if you want to ever get into camera work. But it also shoots good good uh, still photos. So it's a good compromise and like maybe play with it to see if you're interested in uh, videography later on. But uh, this uh, video by Indie Mogul, How to Start Investing in Film Equipment, all these links I'll put up into my YouTube video. But he does a great breakdown with a professional in the field right now of what you what you would want to invest in starting off your like any photography or film gear you're going to want. But again, this has just been a very quick intro into what to get started into photography. Again, the aperture, ISO and shutter speed, the three principles of photography. You can look that up on YouTube. It'll show you a lot of things. Look up this simulator if you want, if you just want to get like, uh, just want to see what it looks like without a camera. And yes, there's even a way like you can compare cameras. I know when I was shopping out there for cameras of what it wants to look, for, uh, look like, GH5 versus, let's go with the A7 SII. See if I can find it right quick. Like honestly, once you have it broken down, you can just compare them of, well, this has that, this has that, and this is able to do all that. If it gets like too confusing, just look up terms, literally look up terms. It'll help you so much. But again, it will usually boil down to price of like, what can I afford? And of course, well, you got to start somewhere like just start looking somewhere now I realized that this was a lot to throw at you and 
you might be like, well, I just got a lot of homework from Ms. Piscina of where do I go from here? Start with the simulator of like, once you understand these three principles, then you can play around with your phone because I know that's like one of the most things that everyone has right now. Download the Visco app and then just start messing with the ISO. Like honestly, even the default camera one does let you like mess with the lighting. So like you leave it pushed and then you go up or down, for example, like that. And it lets you mess with what is the ISO with the light, with how much light it's receiving. So that's at least one thing it lets you mess with. But again, I recommend going with the Visco app or something else because I've already shown you all some stuff on editing. And yes, it's always like this is something that I shot using my 10 year old camera. And to me, this is exactly what I wanted to capture. Uh, there is some small tweaks that I edited in here, but even something like this, where like I want to edit it. Let me show you an example. So even something like that, that I wanted to edit, I can always like go into here. One pro tip, shoot in camera raw. You might have never heard this term before, but camera raw is. So there's a difference between JPEG and camera raw. JPEG is the compressed version. You know, when you compress something, you lose some details. But camera raw is the entire is everything. You get the entire actual picture so that if you ever want to convert this into a JPEG, you can but a JPEG doesn't go the other way because a JPEG has already lost everything. If you just want to take a quick look right here, you'll notice that the JPEG is 6,000 kilobytes and the camera raw file is 23,000 kilobytes. So there's way more data here that I can use and mess with, but you can't, you can only go down from there. You can go from camera raw to JPEG, but you can't go the other way. You can't get detail that it was already lost. So right here is just a quick fix that I did something like that. Like that's the audio auto and that's what I changed to it. Yes, you can't like notice that I got rid of some of that. Like there's still some noise right there. So like I said, you can edit that out, but the more you edit out, the less details you have over here. Like notice that these people have are like really smooth right now. That's because I'm trying to get rid of that noise and it's moving all the pixels out. So I do lose some details there. It's a trade-off. Editing is not perfect, guys. So the better your original photo is, the less editing work you're gonna have to do in the future because I shoot hundreds of pictures in a, in just one session. And if I wanna edit all of those pictures, that's gonna take me at least two minutes each. My workflow has just like gone so much higher. And if there's one photo that I really, really like, but there's a lot of things wrong with it, then that's going to take me way more than two minutes to edit it. And that's more time that I'm going to have to spend with that. And like, just the better your photo, the less you have to edit or fix and edit. So again, that was just, this is the regular JPEG. That was the camera raw. And that's about it. All I have for today. Again, get started with the simulator, find out what, a camera you want to invest in oh did I talk about lenses yes I did so again uh, find out what camera you want to invest in and always look up like if you want to buy them separately like you don't want to buy like from this person you just want to buy the camera body like that then look up the lenses so if you're looking at lenses of I do know that Lens Hero is one of the things that I use to like see what type of. So for me, I would go with the GH5S. I would say I want something around a few hundred dollars. My style, I would go for something like, is there anything that macro? It might show me something, it might not. Nope, no lenses. So let's increase that budget. There we go. Now, it show, now it's showing me some options. And all of these will be things that fit the camera that I put in. Like if you want to go with something else, let's say the Canon 3T, the T3i. T3i. Okay. T3i or the T3. 
the reason that the I like the three T3i at first was because it has this like little monitor that lets it zoom out. Like some of these, this is pro tip right here. Uh, some of these only let you like just have this right here. Like it looks like that. You can only see it like this. And I, to me, I don't like that because my only option is to go like this and then look at it here like this and then look at it here or just go like that. What if I want to shoot like down here? What if I want to shoot from like high up? I can't see the thing. So having this right here lets me know what it's looking like. Or if I want to show the, if I'm shooting the model or the, my client, then they can see exactly what they're looking like right here. And it's a great way to get started. Yes, when you get to like higher level or you buy more gear, you can always have like a separate monitor to do that. But to me, this is a great like starting piece right here, like a monitor that can do this. Like and just, and I know the Rebel T3 eyes or like the eye, if it has an eye in the end for cannons, I know that it has that. You can always, of course, let's look it up. So let's say I'm going for the T3 eye. I want something for macro. Or let's go with um, telephoto. I want something for telephoto. I can spend up to 500 bucks for that. And it's giving me options right now. See, this is only $120. I think that's the one that I actually have right now. But anyways... It tells you all the things right here. Again, I recommend LensHero.com if you're getting to the lenses part of your purchases. And uh, that's about it for photography. Like, honestly, there are so many projects you can do of uh, getting started. I can get to editing later on in the series, but just get started with photography. Start taking photos and see what they look like start messing with the settings to see am i getting the exact picture that i want not just does it look good but is this what i wanted it to look like because again our human eye and the camera is entirely separate of it doesn't see exactly what we see so we have to make it uh get to there this has been mr piscina thank you for watching hope you guys learned a lot and again send me an email send me a message uh Put a, put a comment on the right here and I'll be sure to reach out to you guys to see how I can help. Just let me know what I can do with getting you guys to where you want to go. Thank you and have a good day. Stay safe out there, guys. All right, guys, I know I threw a lot at you guys today. I know that that's a lot. And honestly, I don't really prepare a lot for these. These are just things that I've, I know that I've been paid for, that I've, like, as a professional, actually do. And having to, like, give my advice to someone that's just starting out is like I have to constantly be thinking of what would be what would i have liked to know starting out and for me i hope i answered some of that here today and i hope you guys have gotten some exposure to that if you're interested in photography or videography for that matter and giving you some a place to start with right now but again uh, if you want to contact me my info is on the screen right now send me an email send me a message uh i have my twitter my instagram youtube channel my facebook channel uh, just let me know what you want to do next and any advice I can give you, I'll be happy to give you that. Thank you guys. Have a good day.